All right, this is Mark, and uh, we're on the 3D printing area of Reddit. And so I want to talk about this particular modification you can do to your Wanhelp 3D printer. And uh, I imagine you can do this to any of your uh, 3D printers from Wanhelp, but I'm using the i3 duplicator. And somebody called uh, Mega Blue posted this about two weeks ago. And uh, he said that um, he was missing some steps in his uh, printer and the steps in his motor I guess what he means is um, were causing some unevenness in his prints and he posted some pictures and the results look pretty darn good now um, he didn't use a Wanhao duplicator he used a different printer altogether he used a Delta um, um, configured printer but I'm not sure I don't remember what he said it was exactly um, and so this particular modification is is for certain stepper drivers and so to make a long story short I looked into it to see if this would work for a Wanhao and um, you know if, if it would get results similar to what he was posting and I don't know if the results are going to be the same we're going to find out but it looks very promising um, now uh, so I went on AliExpress and these were eight dollars and forty six cents per three pack and in order to do this mod you need two because you have four uh, stepper motors that you can use this on everything but the um, filament driving motor um, the E motor I guess it's the E um, E slot on your Melzi board can use this and Looking further into this also, uh, this particular modification is something that is also called a ripple eliminator um, for other printers. So if you're not using a Wanhao printer, um, this one here is called a ripple eliminator and it's in <clears throat> Hong Kong they're selling this. So I, I think you can probably order this. It's from uh, hkmakers.hk and yeah, it's basically the same thing. It's just... Um, it's diodes in a certain arrangement and uh, according to Jet Guy um, he said that uh, you know the the board already the Melzi board already has one of these built into it so this is just kind of like a a redundant sort of thing to put on there but the results are pretty promising the the back of the boards here you can see you can have your connection wires soldered directly to the board so you can see here how that's done it's pretty simple you've got your um, one side here where you've added solder and this is without solder so um, you, know, you add your solder on there stick your wire on there heat it up make sure there's nothing no wires crossed or anything like that so let's go over to my printer and um, now it also comes with uh, each of these comes with some shrink tubing which you can see here is um, the appropriate size and here's the other side you can see now I'm not soldering it in or anything and the way that they connect is not so great let me get my flashlight um, they don't lock in place on the board itself All right, there's it's it'll connect to your Melzi board but um, there's no uh, like little sawtooth piece that clips in there where you can click it in place Let's see if I can so it's just kind of sitting in there um, now each of these circuit boards also has a number corresponding to the wire um, the proper wire so we have four and four three three two two one one uh, so there's no guessing you know which wire goes where um, it's very simple and they all line up appropriately um, just make sure that when you take your your uh, sorry it's so dark in here Get my flashlight in there first so before you hook that in there uh, you want to make sure that the wire corresponding number uh, corresponds to the position of the uh, the plug that you plug into your your circuit board here so for example um, So this red connector goes into the board and the right side of the connector uh, 
will go into the right side of that connector there, right? So since all the numbers are lined up, you want to make sure that the right side of this wire connector goes into the right side of the board, and, and that's the red wire. So each one has a red wire that goes uh, directly down inside, and it always faces to the right. Um, so you can actually reverse that, you know, if you were to... Uh, I think you can, let me see. Nope, that's probably the only way you can do it. But um, on the board itself, <clears throat> you can see it's kind of like a universal plug, so you can actually flip, flip it over and it would still go in. So just make sure that the... I know it's really dark, but... Yeah, just make sure that the, the red side is firmly seated in place. So about the prints. So I have these prints and I want to go over what the, you know we're looking at here and, and so that when I do print another skull, I'm going to print an exactly identical skull as this um, for my, my test piece. Um, this is a, a really old print using Cura and I'm going to try my best to show over here maybe where it's dark <clears throat> on my dirty desk what the print looks like and so you can see that there's these stray lines all over the place which um, like blobs which kind of taper off on the edge on the side here so um, that was one of the problems that seemed to be fixed, which were shown here for the TL Smoother before shot, where you had these blobs, okay? So before I got this in the mail, I did some research and found out that um, you can get a similar result to what this modification does just by changing a setting in Cura. And to do that, uh, you want to change where your start and stop point is in the settings in Cura. And uh, I believe that's called, um, okay, it's called Z Seam Alignment, okay, under Print Setup. And you want to change that to the back, okay. So on our model here, we're going to look at the back. And you'll notice, and it's kind of hard to tell. Okay, here you can see it. There's some lighter shades of green along the edge in the back, um, where the, the beginning and stop points are on your, uh, your printer nozzle. And it goes up and it creates a seam line, okay? It goes all the way down the back. Now, if we change this Z seam alignment to random, like, like this, it's going to think for a moment, and you will see these little random lines all over your, your model in Cura, okay? So this is where the nozzle is going, and then it's really removing um, or releasing filament all the way around, and then the next layer goes up and then it starts here and you know goes back around that way and that's a start and stop point and in between the uh, the layer change there's a small amount of time for that nozzle to be warm and uh, unfortunately the pressure builds up inside there and the faster you print the, the more pressure builds up and the more likely that you'll get a similar pattern on your model that looks just like this, where you have these like blobs where the, the nozzle starts here and releases that pressure and over time it tapers off. So <clears throat> the, the initial post was that there are um, missing steps, okay? So I don't know if that's really true. Uh, this one setting where we change it from, uh, from the, the Z-seam alignment to the back as opposed, as opposed to shortest or random, I actually cleared that up on my print. So here is 
same print, but a, a different Z seam alignment, okay? So here you don't see what you see here. You see those little start and stop points that create those uh, thicker, thicker lines right there? So I clean that up just by changing that. But the only difference is that in the back, and you can only see it at the very bottom, there is a seam in the middle of the green back of the green skull there. And you can kind of very faintly see it, but it's almost not even noticeable towards the top. Now with regards to uh, the start and stop points, um, the new Z seam alignment towards the back uh, created another problem where all of those start and stop points um, started from the center and went out this way. And so I have a rougher looking skull on this side than on the opposite side here. It's smoother on this side because that's where the, the nozzle tapers off the most. All right. Whereas with the other model, I just have like these random lines, you know, starting and stopping points all over the place. And um, so to get rid of uh, that as much as possible, what I wanted to show you guys is an um, experimental thing in Cura. So all those thicker lines, we want to try to get rid of that. And there's this thing called coasting. So I simply enabled it, and you can see here in my settings, um, got coasting speed and volume and and so forth. That's one of the uh, things you can do. And the other thing is to make sure that combing mode is is selected uh, available, and you want to put it on all. And uh, we've got a travel avoid distance, distance, and we have this Z hop selected, and you can see what I've got there, and that actually helps as well. Now keep in mind um, that the coasting volume here, which I have as 0 0.125, uh, that's about the maximum you want to go. So the diameter, which is 0 0.4 cubed, 0 0.4 millimeters, so 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4, I believe, is uh, 64. But I did the max, which is just slightly over that because I think my nozzle might be too large um, from repeated use, might be slightly oversized. So I went with 0 0.125, but that's about the max you want to go. Um, I found that after doing, using that setting, <clears throat> go back to my our skulls here, uh, it did actually clean up the print slightly better than my last. So there's less lines. And I also did other things like slow, slow the print down even further. But uh, as far as I can tell, this is the best I can get this print. And there's still these, these lines, which like I say, it's hard to probably see on camera. But there's still a little bit of unevenness everywhere. And that's kind of what I'm hoping this modification will address. Turning it on. There's your LCD, everything's upside down, but... Everything's in place. See what it says, it says... It's okay. <clears throat> so I want to try moving my steppers around, see what happens. So I'm going to go to the home all position. And the steppers seem to work. <clears throat> it's going in the proper direction. So I know all my connections are good. Um, I put it all up properly inside. Okay, so uh, it's been five hours. I printed up a new head here, new skull. And uh, 
just to examine them you can see here on camera what they look like uh, is there any kind of major difference with this modification and the Wanhao uh, duplicator there's really not um, I do notice that there are some features that are actually worse with the TL smoother mod uh, some of these little crevice or lines in the nose area are just slightly more prominent in the TL smooth smoother one uh, looking at the, the rear where both of these had the most imperfections because I put that uh, the nozzle here begins to print and it has pressure built up in it and so there's these kind of long lines that stretch out from the center uh, on the right side here of each and so here's the before where you can see a couple of prominent lines here and one in the center there so in the center here and here and the TL smoother one uh, the line here is a little bit more prominent so a little bit worse um, but that said if you look at the top part of the model and I know you probably can't tell on camera uh, this one has a more or less a prominent line that runs through about right here in the G-code uh, where I guess uh, a lot of pressure builds up so there's a little bit more of a ridge and on this one that ridge is almost not really perceptible it should be around here somewhere uh, okay so with the really long cast shadow I can kinda make out where it is right here but it looks a little bit better on the TL smoother version so I would say it's about a 50 50 you know there's like there's no real major improvements it seems like there's a 50 percent improvement in areas that are you know sort of above the center of the model here um, <clears throat> and I think that has to do with the angle that it's printing where the the nozzle is you know making smaller and smaller circles as opposed to in the, the center where it's more uh, everything is very vertical right in these parts like here it's very vertical so on the top it seems to actually help a little bit um, but it's not by much you know it's barely perceptible so I almost really don't notice any improvements I have to say I don't think that um, this mod is something I would suggest uh, for Wanhao users uh, if you have an i3 duplicator, which is what I used, I would not recommend it. Um, I would more recommend using Cura and adjusting your settings there, making your speed slower for better prints. Or, uh, you know, checking out the community, seeing what the other mods um, are being done, and, and go with that and, and skip this mod altogether. Alright, so there's my review of the TL Smoother. Um, thanks for watching, and good luck with your printing.